Hey everyone, welcome back to another video of uh, BioBlender. Uh, today I'm going to be uh, showing some new features uh, for the new BioBlender version. Uh, so uh, the first feature or the first difference from the original version of BioBlender is that I changed the original geometry of the lipids uh, to be uh, to have a curve uh, so and to be more workable with uh, subdivision surface. So if we look at this, uh, this already has uh, one level subdivision, but if I can go back to zero level, this is the default. Uh, but as we see, it's just much better. And if we look at the geometry, uh, we have some edge loops that we can modify to change the curves. So if we wanted to change this curve, then we can uh, go ahead and modify that. Uh, I just think this is a much better uh, default lipid to use. And as always, you can increase the subdivision levels to one or two, depending on how much detail you want and how much closer you want to get. Uh, so in this case, this is uh, how it looks. So it just looks uh, a little more realistic, uh, or it just has those uh, kinks that we would see in lipids. Uh, another um, thing that's new in this version is that uh, I added uh, two extra materials to the list of materials. So if we go ahead and we look over here, uh, there is this new cartoon uh, material. So this is going to be cartoon, uh, the second version of cartoon. So we have cartoon one and cartoon two. Uh, this is what it looks on uh, Ubiquitin, so if I go on uh, ahead and hide uh, the rest, this is what it would look on uh, Ubiquitin. Um, then I also have, uh, uh, you can also change the color of this material if you go to the emission and then to the hue and saturation. You can change the hue and uh, play with the different tones or you can go ahead and uh, explicitly change the color. Uh, it works on a color ramp, uh, so you can also change that color ramp uh, if you go to the shading or if you open the material. Uh, let's look at another example. So uh, here's what it looks on uh, DNA objects and uh, another protein, uh, the spike protein of the coronavirus. Um, so again, we can uh, play with the hue to get different results. And then if we grab these objects and now we change to the other new material that's called real 2. Uh, so this is a second version of uh, a real material. It uh, It's just it a little more shiny uh, than the other real. The other real was based on um, uh, source of source of surface scattering. Uh, this one is more uh, of a shiny material uh, or a glossy material. Uh, and again, you can change uh, the color of that. Uh, both of these new materials work uh, based on the radius uh, or base. Uh, there are spherical materials, so as you can see, it's pretty obvious on the DNA that the color gradient changes uh, from the center out. Uh, sometimes you want this type. Uh, sometimes you want the gradient to be different and you can change that in material settings uh, but this just works really good for small proteins or, or even larger proteins like this one here uh, you can look at the inside and it looks like it's shining from the inside so if you want to go from uh, one of these effects then you can do this uh, it also works uh, these two materials work both in cycles and in EV uh, and again you can change the hue if you go to the color uh, and this is what it would look like for example something like this uh, Alright, so those are the two new materials. Uh, now let's get to the main new feature of this new update. Uh, so the uh, new feature that I've added is that now we have a new import type. So now we can also select spheres uh, from our import menu. And I'm going to do, uh, first let's start with Ubiquitin, which is our uh, example. Uh, and now as you can see here, we have more options. So now we have uh, in the quality, once we select spheres, uh, so if you notice, if I go to surface, I'm going to have low and high quality. But if I go to spheres, then I'm going to get cubes, lowest, low, high, and nerves. Uh, so let's start with uh, low quality. And uh, also I get this lighter for number of colors. So let's start with low quality and one color. Uh, this is what it's going to look like. Uh, so this basically is sim trying to simulate uh, the molecule of the mon mon shader that we see in the protein data bank. As always, we can grab uh, these two spheres that are the ones being in instanced and then apply line art and this is what it would look like. Uh, it is important for this material to have ambient occlusion activated. So if you go to EV, uh, this also works in cycles, uh, but it's uh, it's going to look the same both in cycles and in EV. So it's best to use EV in this case uh, because EV is just going to be much faster and it's going to look the same in both because it's an emission material. Uh, so if you're in EV, activate uh, ambient occlusion. You can see that it gives this uh, effect on the spheres. So if I turn it off, it's completely flat. But if I activate ambient occlusion, it gives that effect. Uh, the reason it's doing that is because if you go to the uh, shading of one of these spheres, 
uh, then we're able to see that it, it works on a color ramp and an ambient occlusion so if you change this slider here you can also change that effect of the color ramp as well as this uh, multiply factor here that's basically combining a color with our ambient occlusion uh, but this is the values that I uh, I chose as default because I think it looks the best uh, but you can always play with it uh, so this is low quality uh, then if we delete this uh, we can go to uh, nerves uh, here instead of having uh, a mesh as a sphere we get a nurse uh, sphere so if we go into edit mode this is what it looks like um, and then if I go to high quality then I just get a more uh, mesh with more vertices uh, similar to low and lowest uh, just it changes uh, the number of vertices and then we have cubes and then cubes is gonna give us uh, basically cubes instead of spheres in those um, uh, atom positions uh, but the reason I added cubes, uh, first of all, is because it's the lowest. Uh, it has the lowest vertex count, so it only has uh, vertices in the corners, right? Uh, however, uh, what works really good is that you can always turn a cube into a sphere, and that way you get more control on how many uh, subdivision levels you want. For example, if you go ahead and throw in a, uh, if I for now remove the line art, and if I throw in a, a subdivision surface uh, with two levels and then I add a cast modifier and then on top of this I add again a subdivision surface uh, then I get a control on, uh, on how uh, I want this uh, uh, on the number of vertices I want this sphere uh, we can change the cast to one maybe uh, to make it more spherical there you go uh, and then again uh, this is just gonna give you uh, more control on the number of vertices so if you want more or less quality that's a way to do it uh, or if you just want to look at it as cubes, you can also have proteins look like cubes. Uh, but if you are sure of your quality, then you can always pick from here. So if I pick lowest, uh, it's going to bring uh, some in a sphere with very few vertices. But if you're going to be far away, it basically looks the same. So if I add a line art, basically from up to here, it looks the same as at high quality. If I get closer, then I would want more uh, higher quality. Or as I said, you can always use cubes and modify the quality as you please. All right. So let's go on to uh, a little more complicated. Uh, so if we go into uh, hemoglobin protein, and for now I'm gonna select one color, and let's go to with low quality from now on. Uh, so as you see here, I get hemoglobin. Uh, as always, I can grab my spheres, apply the line art, and this is what it would look like. So it's straight out of the, uh, just by importing it, you already get this nice combination of colors, uh, and you already get a cartoony visualiz a cartoon visualization, visualization of your protein. However, let's say uh, you know hemoglobin has four uh, domains or four chains. So maybe you want a different color for each of, of them. So what you can do is if you select zero uh, in the number of colors, then it's going to use uh, the number of chains to determine those colors. So as we see here, uh, it was able to determine that there's four chains here. Uh, so if I go ahead into uh, side view and then grab all those spheres, apply the line art, uh, this is what it would look like if I wanted uh, one uh, color per chain. However, maybe that's too colorful for me and I only want uh, two colors. So I can always go on two colors. And then what's going to happen here is that it's going to loop over this. Uh, it's going to basically um, iterate over these four colors and then go back to the first one. So as we see here, two of them got uh, the red color while two uh, got that orange color. So this is already looking very similar to one of their images uh, that they have in the protein da data bank. Um, uh, again, this would be hemoglobin. And then uh, if you select three colors, then that would also work here. So we can select three colors. And that would basically iterate over the orange one. So it would go back to orange. Uh, all these colors are pretty fine. There's up to eight colors uh, default. If you use one more than eight colors, then it iterates over those colors. So it goes back to the first one. Um, and then there's one uh, final mode that I want to show here. So if you go uh, number of colors zero and again import it, what's going to happen here? Oh, sorry, not not zero. But if you go minus one, uh, this is the uh, one final trick. Then it's going to import everything as gray except for one uh, chain. So this can be useful if you want to highlight a, speci a specific structure, then uh, you can do it this way. Uh, so if you press minus one, basically it's going to have all the chains in one color um, and then one uh, with red. Uh, you can always change the color. So if you say uh, you maybe wanted to change this color, so you can always go into the emission and you can change the hue and saturation. Uh, so maybe if I pu put that at point 0.2 and make sure this one is also at point 0.2 or you can uh, go straight and change the uh, 
the color manually so here instead of red we get purple so uh, the reason it, I changed the hue is because it's already giving me two tones that are very similar uh, but you can always go and uh, pick the colors if you go into the RGB here then you can pick the, uh, the exact color you want uh, and then you can do this for each sphere uh, again you could have all four colors and do it that way uh, what I'm gonna show here is that it also works with molecules uh, so for example I'm gonna do an example with a uh, the spike protein so if I import uh, the spike protein uh, with both molecules and uh, the protein and I'm gonna uh, select here uh, zero so I get a uh, color for every chain uh, so in this case uh, I'm gonna get all the colors imported because this spike protein has a lot of molecules around it uh, those molecules are basically uh, glycans uh, attached to our spike protein and each of them has a different chain that's why it loops many times over all of those uh, but let's say I wanted those to be one color and then my spike protein to be another color uh, so what I do, uh, what I can do here is uh, let's go to protein and let's bring our protein, uh, oh no, let's first go to uh, molecule so let's only bring the molecules with uh, one color so we can go ahead and select that, so in this case it's going to bring only the molecules with one color uh, the reason I'm doing it this way is because um, uh, the program goes over the um, atom positions of the of the each of the atom positions and then it centers the protein based on those atom positions so as you see here uh, if I only have those molecules it's gonna the atoms uh, it's gonna be different it's gonna get translated differently than if I have the entire protein but if I do it this way bring in first both and then only the molecules then I can basically shift this uh, and I'm looking here to overlap here at the left so once I have that overlap uh, then I can go ahead and uh, uh, delete all of these spheres that got imported uh, because in this case now I would have and I can also delete this so now I have the uh, only the molecules but I have them uh, perfectly positioned I can move this to the side and then I can bring now just the protein uh, with one color uh, so now we have the glycans in position as well as the protein but now we can control uh, the glycan colors here so if we go to emission if we go to hue and maybe we select a value like uh, 0 0.1 uh, and we can do the same for here, so emission, uh, hue and saturation, 0 0.1 and maybe we select a value for these ones to be uh, 0 0.2 so they, they're close but not uh, exactly the same and then I have to do the same for this last sphere 0 0.2, so I get something that looks like this uh, let me go to side view, grab them, apply the line art uh, and then the last thing, so as you see here I have uh, my spike protein with all those glycans attached and they're in the position uh, that we were able to get when we imported both of them uh, however now they are completely distinct objects so that's why that's why we can color them differently this way uh, now what uh, the last thing I'm gonna do is grab uh, the ones that are blue uh, and then I'm just gonna uh, go uh, put this emission strength to something like 4 and do the same here uh, emission strength something like 4 uh, it doesn't look like that good but if we activate bloom uh, then we get that uh, something that looks like this so if I hide I had this hide this then you see uh, I get uh, light coming out of those uh, glycans so maybe if I want to highlight the specific molecules uh, around my protein then this is also a nice way to do it as you see you get that bloom effect around it uh, alright the final thing I'm gonna show uh, it's going to be a uh, how this works with um, DNA uh, so let me go ahead and delete this uh, so now I'm gonna work with DNA so I'm gonna do uh, we got DNA as usual here uh, now we have uh, a new option here for surface uh, we have an option for quality so we can do high or low quality now uh, but w the one I want to show now it's gonna be spheres and then let's do it on a low quality first and let me do it as a free mode uh, so if I go ahead and import DNA uh, then this one looks a little bit different uh, this one is colored uh, with um, not only two colors uh, it's color each strand is colored differently and then the phosphates as well as the bases as w well as the sugar are colored differently uh, so let me just go ahead and apply uh, liner with 0 0.01 so if I go ahead and do that uh, this is what DNA would look like I, I imported it with low quality uh, low quality it's basically if you're gonna be f uh, far away from your uh, DNA or if you're gonna have a big structure then you can really uh, for performance reasons you can do uh, uh, it's easier to import it as a low quality 
uh, if if it look if I look at it from this way, then uh, it's no different like than high quality. However, performance is gonna be uh, much faster. Uh, you can even get a little bit close, and it looks alright. Uh, if you want to get closer, then what you could do is uh, import it as a uh, higher quality. And in this case, uh, higher quality, uh, we're gonna have a lot of vertices here. So you have to be careful with this uh, because each of these is a sphere. So if you look at the geometry, uh, now this is a uh, dense mesh uh, and it's going to be uh, replicated many times. So you have to be careful here, but still uh, for small strands, it works perfectly. So if I go ahead and apply the line art, uh, and this also works in cycles, everything except the line art because the line art uh, always uh, works with thickness. So in this case, uh, the line art is not going to work. Uh, but as you see, it's it's much slower, but it's still you can work around it. Um, and you see, if you can create, if you just want small shapes and not entire uh, structures, then this works really, really good. Uh, the other thing you can do is uh, do that with RNA. So RNA should work the same. Uh, so let's import it in high quality again. And this is what RNA looks like. Um, again, you can uh, extrude the curve and play around to make different shapes. Uh, for now, I'm going to show low uh, DNA and maybe I select a pre-selected one uh, so I can go always with, uh, let's say, Nucleus 2 uh, and then I can go ahead and hit add and in this case, it's going to follow that predefined curve uh, and in this case, is that sphere visualization. We can always grab it and apply the line, ar line art uh, to just give it a little more and this is what it's going to look like. Uh, so yeah, those that's basically uh, all the new features. Uh, the reason I stopped adding features at this point is because uh, Blender is going to change significantly for version 3. Uh, so uh, next uh, version would be coming out once Blender 3 uh, comes out near December. Uh, the reason for that is because the add-on uh, relies on uh, geometry no nodes and it, that's going to change a lot. So uh, I'm going to have to rework most of the code around that. Uh, but uh, however, I'll do that and then uh, for version 3 we'll have a new uh, uh, working BioBlender and once BioBlender is fully imported into Blender 3, then we'll I will start adding uh, some new features. Um, remember, if you want any uh, feature, uh, you can uh, join the Discord, a link in the description. Uh, you can also uh, talk to other BioBlender users in that Discord uh, or even report bugs. So make sure you join the Discord and that's it for this video and see you next time.